hey there, this is really cool. What an honor to be asked to share a message of hope with you all today. I pray that you would be encouraged and uplifted and encounter the warmth of the Spirit of God. My name is Pete Wright, and it's my privilege to be a pastor at Springs Church in Gore, North, just down the road from Sedgley Community Church. Thank you, Pastor Steve, for your invitation today. It's really great. Right here, right now, let me give you some good news. As Christians, we believe that you were designed on purpose, with a purpose, and for a purpose. You weren't created simply to exist and then not exist. We exist because God uh, created us. We exist because of God and for God. You were created by the love of God, for the love of God, because of the love of God. You were created for relationship with the one true God, created for connection with your creator, and you're gifted the opportunity for sin-free, eternal security because of Jesus Christ. It's just so good. If you ever thought this life is just you making it all up as you go along, can I encourage you today that God is the author of all time and all creation, and he would love you to open the pages of your heart for him to write his story into your life. Intuitively, you know there has to be more to life, more than what you can see. There must be more beyond your own understanding. At the end of this message today, I'm excited to give you the opportunity to take some first steps of faith in Jesus so that you can know God personally, now and forever. I'm excited right now to bring you encouragement by looking at one person's life-changing encounter with Jesus. In the Gospel of John, the book written by one of Jesus' closest friends, we read this. Jesus left Judea and departed again for Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was still there. So Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. Uh, A woman from Samaria came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, are asking for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria, for Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it was that was saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw water with and the well here is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well. And drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. And Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I give them will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give them will become in him or her a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here or draw water again. And Jesus said to her, go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I've no husband. Jesus said, yeah, you're right in saying I have no husband. You've had five husbands. And the one that you have now is not even your husband. What you have said is true, the woman said to him. Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me. The hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, he who is called the Christ. And when he comes, he will tell us all things. And Jesus said to her, I am who, I, I who speak to you am he. What an amazing story. You know, where Jesus makes this offer is really significant. Sychar had once been known as Shechem, a place made famous by a historical biblical hero called Jacob, who had built a well that supplied fresh flowing, life-giving water. But over time, Shechem had become known as Sikar. See, Sikar uh, translates as drunken or intoxicated. It had become known as a place where perhaps people went to lose their senses and drown their sorrows and numb the pain of life. 
lift their spirits temporarily, perhaps. This is the kind of place that that was. The place that had been known for something life-giving was now known as a place that was life-sapping. You know, the Bible teaches that we were and are created to be pure and in relationship with God himself, who made us and loves us. But our humanity has got in the way of pure intentions and left us in a state of sin separation from God. It's precisely at that place, the place of separation from God, that Jesus appears. Jesus steps in and offers hope and restoration and eternal peace. So let me encourage you. When you're lost, when you've lost all sense of life, when you've pushed all the boundaries you can push, when you're spiritually, emotionally, physically impaired, Jesus appears. He offers something new, something awesome. He's ready to restore and repair and introduce true identity, spiritual life, health and peace. It's good, eh? You know, to whom Jesus makes this offer is also very significant. You see, Jesus was troubled to the religious elites of his day. He offered the grace of God to everyone. As far as the pompous religious elites were concerned, Jesus brought salvation to all the wrong kind of people. The problem of religious leaders of his day was that Jesus offered the kingdom of heaven to all the wrong people people. Take a look at the person who he's offering water to. Number one, she's a Samaritan. The prejudice of the day was that Jewish people like Jesus should not be mixing with Samaritans. You know, we live in a post-Martin Luther King era where we've grown up with a global ideal that, that we should not be judged on the color of our skin, but on the content of our character. And sadly, it's a fight that we're still fighting today. There was no racial tolerance in first century Palestine. Jesus was fighting for equality and social justice long before any civil rights movement. You can be sure today that no matter your color, your creed, your ethnicity, God loves you. Jesus reaches out to you. God created mankind in his image, all mankind. Number two, she's a she. For Jesus as a Jewish rabbi speaking directly to a woman on his own without her husband was culturally outrageous. (laughs) Number three, she's a dirty sinner. Her moral integrity was undeniably shot through. She'd had five husbands and was now having an affair with somebody else. Her entire life and reputation was a sordid soap opera all on its own. To boot, she's living in a place famous for people being absolutely smashed out of their faces. And yet Jesus reveals to her that how she is living means a relationship with God is virtually impossible. Despite this, Jesus meets her where she's at in her environment, in all of her failings, and he shares with her the fact that she can be changed and receive eternal life. She was the wrong person, in the wrong place, living a wrong life, and yet Jesus steps into her world. He was the right person, in the right place, with the perfect answer. In John 4, 39 to 42, it says, many of the Samaritans from that village, they committed themselves to Jesus because of the woman's witness. He knew all about the things I did. He knows me inside out. They asked him to stay on, and so Jesus stayed two days. A lot more people entrusted their lives to him when they heard what he had to say. They said to the woman, we're no longer taking this on your say-so. We've heard it for ourselves, and we know it for sure. He's the savior of the world. Incredible. (laughs) Perhaps the most significant thing Jesus did that day was the offer that he made to the woman at the well. He offered her living water. What the heck is living water? In John chapter 7, verse 38 to 39, Jesus says this. He says, whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And by this, he meant the spirit. Do you know Jesus was talking about the personal life and nature of God coming to make a home in their hearts, uh, in the hearts of the people who would accept him as Lord. Where God is, there is fullness, there is truth, satisfaction, identity, meaning and purpose. The, The message paraphrase of the scripture quotes Jesus like this. The water I give will be an artesian spring from within, gushing fountains of endless life. What a promise. Not just to the woman that day, but to you and to me right now. In a place of drunkenness, Jesus offered water of life. Listen, if you've ever been drunk, you will know its effects. You drink and drink and drink, but afterwards you're more thirsty than you were before. You become dehydrated and you become hungover. 
Jesus was not talking about a physical drink that will never let you go thirsty. We know he was talking about the eternal, present, spiritual, physical satisfaction of God himself. How many of us go through life chasing love and life and fortune, thinking those things will bring satisfaction? Things satisfy our hearts for a little while, no doubt, but a human spirit is designed for a relationship with Father God. And he's soon crying out for more, something to fill a void in a world that want, of wants and needs. You know, Jesus actually said that you are incomplete until you become friends with God. Stepping into faith and relationship with Jesus Christ himself gives us the ability to turn our backs on the pain of all the sin and mistakes we make, make a 180 degree turn towards God, walk a new path with a new life as a new creation in God. We learn to love and discover our world through the eyes of the one who made us. A relationship with Jesus opens the human heart to receive spiritual justice, mercy, healing, satisfaction, redemption, renewal, salvation, and an eternal friendship with the creator of all things. He's the lover of your soul today. Is that amazing? Right now is a moment in time where you are colliding with the truth of the gospel of Jesus. Right now, I don't care if you're labeled black, white, male, female, gay, straight, transgender, something else, a liberal, a conservative, the greatest of sinners, the least of sinners, a failure or a great success. Jesus is available freely to all. You may feel like the wrong person in the wrong place, living a wrong life, and yet Jesus steps into your world right now today. He's the right person in the right place with the offer to make you new. No matter your past, your reputation, your mistakes or controversies, living water, the spirit of God himself, if taken, when offered, will bring spiritually dead people to life. How does the Bible teach that we access this living water? It's through believing that Jesus is the son of God, that he died on the cross as the one and only perfect sacrifice. His life paid the ransom for our sin. And our sin is taken to his grave and it's left there. Then on the third day, he was raised to life so that having left our sin in the grave, we are raised to new life in him. Everyone, the Bible says, who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Some of you hearing this message today may be saying, I know that there is hope out there somewhere. One day I'll find peace. But Jesus would say to you right now, you don't have to wait any longer or look any further. Here I am. Amazing. Amazing. I said at the start of this message that I'd give you an opportunity to stay, take some first steps of faith in Jesus today. And that's what we're going to do right now as you pray together. So wherever you're watching, whether you're walking in the park, and watching on your phone, or you're sitting in your living room, I don't know where you are or who you're watching with, or perhaps you're on your own. But right now, Perhaps something has been ignited, something of faith has stirred in you this morning or this evening, whenever you're watching this, and, and you know that God is present with you in the room, and you want to start this journey of faith in Jesus and access this living water. Why don't you say these words after me as an introduction, as a first step of faith in God. Here we go. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you meet me today in the right place, at the right time, with the right answer. Thank you that you are the answer that I've been looking for. Thank you that you are my soul's satisfaction and my life's brand new start. I come to you today and I believe that you are the Son of God. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for being raised to life. Thank you for giving me new life. I ask that your Holy Spirit would come into my life right now, that I would be known as your son and or daughter. From this day on, be Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Listen, God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us today. I trust faithfully that God has spoken and made himself known to you today. God bless.